Hi, preschool friends. Today we are going to continue talking about insects, but we're going to learn more about insect migration. Migration is when animals or insects or even people move from one place to another. And lots of animals and insects migrate from colder climates to warmer climates. And a climate is a place with a certain type of weather. So it might be a place where it snows a lot or rains a lot or even a place that's nice and sunny. So when right now we're in a place called Michigan and in the fall, it starts to get cold. And right before winter, when it starts to snow, the certain animals migrate to warmer climates. And one of those is a monarch butterfly. We talked about monarch butterflies a little bit yesterday when we read the book called Monarch and we learned a little bit about how they migrate. So today we are going to learn a little bit more by reading another story and it's called Traveling Butterflies. And the author of this story is Susumu Shingu. This person wrote the book and drew the pictures. So in Traveling Butterfly, we find out a little bit about the butterfly's life cycle, but then we go on their migration journey with them. So we are going to read Traveling Butterflies to find out more of their journey. One day in the short summer of a country up north, a tiny creature wakes up inside an egg as small as a dewdrop. A dewdrop is like a drop of water. You can see the egg is very, very tiny. She eats to grow bigger and bigger, munching on lots of milkweed. So when the caterpillar first comes out of the egg, they are very, very tiny. And they have to eat and eat and eat away at the leaves of the milkweed plant. It's the only type of plant that they can eat. You can see that she has already made some holes in this milkweed leaf. When she's big enough, she wraps a cocoon around herself like a veil. When she breaks out, she has changed. So once the caterpillar has eaten enough food and has gotten as big as they can, they climb up to the top of the milkweed leaf and they hang like the letter J. Then they start to make their chrysalis or cocoon and then when it's complete, they stay in there for almost two weeks before they come out as a butterfly. Her new wings look like stained glass. Stained glass is like a window that has lots of beautiful colors. And you can see she has very pretty colors on her wings. Now she needs to drink lots of sweet nectar for her long journey. Do you remember yesterday we learned about how butterflies drink nectar out of the flower? They use this long proboscis. It's like a straw near their mouth, and they're able to suck up the nectar just like you drink juice out of a cup with a straw. They drink that nectar to get nice and strong for their journey, just like bees drink nectar from flowers. And a journey is like a long trip. She knows when it's time to take off riding the southward wind. I wonder how they know when it's time to leave for warmer places. I think you're right. I bet you they know because it starts to feel cold. They sail over an, an enormous lake. Enormous means very, very big. They get splashed by a waterfall. Have you ever seen a waterfall? Sometimes they can be very small and just kind of fall a little bit 
over some rocks and other times they can be very, very big. I will post a picture of a waterfall I went to this summer in the comments below this video. There's the butterflies flying past the waterfall. They busily fly over big cities so they don't just fly through forest and trees or over grass and through flowers. They also have to fly over big, big cities. You can see that there's lots of buildings and they go on for a very long time. Have you ever been to a city? I've been to a city once and when I looked up at the tall, tall buildings, it was so exciting. They rest under leaves on rainy days. So they protect themselves by being able to hang upside down under the leaf. And the leaf kind of acts like an umbrella. Do you use an umbrella when it's raining outside? Me too. I don't like to get wet when it's raining. The umbrella helps keep me dry. She visits villages. And a village is just a small town, much, much smaller than those big cities and crosses over rivers and plains. The southern forest is getting closer and closer. I wonder how they know when they're getting closer and closer to where they're supposed to be. Maybe it starts to feel warmer or maybe they just know that that looks like a good tree to rest in. The trees are turning a deeper and deeper orange. Look at how many butterflies there are in this forest. I bet you when they all land on the trees, you can't even see the green leaves anymore. It's probably all orange and black. I bet you it's an amazing thing to see. The forest is an ideal place for butterflies to mate. Ideal means it's the perfect place. Huddling close, they slumber in peace. And huddling means when they're just really close together and it helps keep them warm and safe. And slumber means to rest or sleep. And it says, so they can take off again to travel back to the North Country. So once the butterflies have stayed in Mexico or Southern California for a while and have had a chance to rest and it's time to get warm again in places like Michigan and it's getting to be spring and summer, the butterflies will start their journey or their migration from Mexico and California back to places like Michigan. And then we get to see them again flying around our flowers. So this is just a little bit more about monarch butterflies. It says the monarch butterfly is small with a wingspan of about four inches. They migrate great distances every year and scientists have studied their migration routes. So that means the scientists watched them and maybe followed them and used special ways to track them to find out where they were going. And so they eventually found out that they went to Mexico. After spending the winter in Mexico, the monarchs began their return trip back north. And they come here and they follow the same, same path or the same route. So it means those butterflies fly back the same place. So back over the prairies, back over the villages and the big cities and the waterfalls and the enormous lake and back to where they started. And it can be as far as 2,500 miles that is a really, really long distance. 
I wonder how they know they're supposed to do this every year. What do you think? You might be right. Have you ever went on a long, long journey or a trip? I would love to hear about it in the comments below so you can have someone from your family type up a comment about a journey or a trip that you went on or you can draw me a picture. I always love to see what you have to draw. So thank you for joining me today as we learned more about monarchs and how they migrate from places like Michigan, where we are now, to places in the south like Mexico or California. I wish I could migrate to somewhere warm before it snows. See you next time, preschool friends.